Now, welcome back to the second part of the lecture that is about the word. Now, the link of the first part of this lecture would be given in the description list at the end. So, please uh, click it and watch the first part of this lecture too to understand the second part. Now, so far, uh, we have given a few definitions to word, like we have given definition orthographically, we have given definition phonologically, and we have given some dictionary definitions. But those all definitions, they do not fulfill the criteria of a word, or there is no agreed definitions that all linguists agree upon. Now, we move further and we discuss semantic definition of a word. Now, the semantic definition of a word states that a word expresses a unified semantic concept. So, when a unified concept is given, uh, it may require one word, it may require two words, it may require three words, or it may require four words. And those two, three, or four words when we together, <coughs> and it gives a unified concept, semantically we call it a word. You might, not kill, <clears throat> you might not call it a word phonologically, you might not call it a word uh, orthographically, okay, you might not uh, call it a word through other definition, but you can call it a word semantically, because semanticists, they agree that when a unified concept is given, it might be one word, two word, or three word, we call it a word. But I told you that semantically that the concept or the meaning or the definition of a word is correct. But phonologically and orthographically might not be correct. Although this may be true for most words, for example, when we say son-in-law. Son now, orthographically we cannot call it a single word we can call it like three words because it's hyphen, son in law. Phonologically, we cannot call it a word because there are uh, different strings of sounds, son in law. But semantically, we call it a word because it gives a unified concept. So, it is not sufficient in order to differentiate between words and non-words. Because semantically, then there is a problem. Then what we call a word and what we call what we uh, what we cannot call a word, this is a problem. Then now let's move to the next slide. What is the problem with this definition? Let's see. Now, the simple reason is not. Uh, every word unified semantic concept corresponds to one word in a given language. This is a problem. That every unified semantic concept corresponds to one word in a given language, that is not possible. For example, the smell of fresh rain in forest in the fall, certainly a unified concept. When we say that the smell of fresh rain in a forest in the fall. Certainly, it is a unified concept. But, we would not consider the smell of the fresh rain in a forest in the fall a word. Right. So, semantically, we may call it a word because it is a unified concept. But, uh, if we come to our, towards the definition of a word, so how can we call it a single word? Because the is itself a word, smell is itself a word, off is itself a word, fresh is itself a word, rain is itself a word, in is itself a word, and forest is itself a word, in, the, fall, these all are separate words, orthographically and also phonologically. But semanticists, they say that the smell of a fresh rain in a forest in the fall, it's a word because it gives unified concept. In fact, English simply has no single word for this concept.
right? In English, fine, right? Like semantically, we can call it a word. We can call it a word because we don't have like a single word for this unified. This is a concept. They the smell of a fresh rain in a forest in the fall. It's a unified concept. But we don't have like uh, a word in English dictionary for such unified concept. So that's why we call it a word. But a simple problem arises with the phrase like uh, the woman who lives next door. This phrase refers to a particular person and should therefore be considered as something ex expressing a unified concept. Because, of course, it's a unified concept. When we say that the woman who lives next door is a unified concept. But the problem is, can we call it a single word? This is okay. We, uh, This is a question. So, therefore, where we were. So, this concept is, however, expressed by more than one word. And we learn from this example that although a word may always express a unified concept right not every unified concept is expressed by one word we uh, came to the conclusion uh, from this semantic definition that uh, a word may always express a unified concept right a single word may always express a unified concept not every uni unified concept is expressed by a single word or by one word because there might be concept and that unify that unified concept requires more than one word right a word may give you a unified concept but it is not important that a unified concept would be given all the time by a single word right so this is semantic definition and it takes us to another step of the definition to a word and that is syntactic definition of a word let's see now here we are with the last definition of a word and after this we will conclude our lecture by identifying the properties of a word that there will be some properties and if we find those properties in a word then we call it a word now the syntactic the syntactic definition of a word it has link with semantic definition of a word because in the previous slide we noticed that a semanticist he calls a word to a unified concept when a unified concept is there they call it a word so that semantic definition of a word take us to syntactic definition of a word now words are usually considered to be syntactic at the smallest element in a sentence words belong to certain syntactic classes like nouns, verbs, adjective, preposition, etc., which are called parts of speech, word classes, or syntactic category. So we see that a sentence is framed with these smallest element, right? And these elements are called nouns, verbs, adjective, prepositions, conjunctions, etc. And when we combine these all words in a sentence, in a proper way, right? Just remember, in a proper way, then it gives a unified concept. Uh, otherwise, if the words are not put, if the words are not placed in a proper order, a unified concept cannot be taken from a sentence. So these small units in a sentence are called parts of speech. When we say parts of speech, so we look at noun, pronoun, verbs, adjective, prepositions, article, blah, blah, blah. 
And when we say that the, we can also call it a word class is like noun pronoun. These are different names or they're technically they are called syntactic category. Like those categories, those uh, like uh, small units which are placed in a, inside a sentence in a proper way, we call them syntactic category. Now, the position in which a given word may occur in a sentence is determined by the syntactic rules of a language because we cannot violate rule. Uh, if I say, suppose that uh, I teach English, a simple sentence. I say, I teach English. So, I, it's a pronoun, place of noun. Or teach, it's a verb. Or English... It's a noun. So there is a rule for this syntactic structure. That where should I put I? Where should I put teach? And where should I put uh, English? I can't say that I English teach. Yes. Why? Because I'm, I'm violating uh, the rules of a sentence or I am violating syntactic rules. Syntactic rules tell me where should I place subject I, where should I place verb teach and where should I place uh, object English. Similarly, I say that I am living in Noshera. So I can't say I in Noshera living or I can't say I in am living no shera because again I am violating rules. So I should put the preposition in its proper place. This is called okay the rules of syntactic structure. So the position in which a given word may occur in a sentence is determined by the syntactic rules of a language. These rules make reference to word and the class they belong to. For example, for example, the word the is said to belong to a class called article. This is one class, uh, the, that's called article. Or if I say, uh, for example, that in, it belong to a class of word that is called preposition. Or if I say like teach and work, so I am using words which belong to a word class that is called verb so and there are rules which determine where in a sentence such words like article may occur usually before noun and their modifier as in in the big house so i can't say that uh big the house if i say big the house so i am violating rule and there'll be no unified concept so next slide Okay, we are here. We can therefore test whether something is a word by checking whether it belongs to such a word class. So here we can find that if something is a word, whether it belongs to a word class or not. This is okay, the criteria of syntactic definition of a word. So uh, if we check the definition of a word syntactically so we will look at if a word by checking whether it belongs to such a word class or not a word class i told you that we can have word class such as noun pronoun verb adjective articles preposition right adverb etc if the item in question for example follow the rules for a noun it should be a no it should be a noun hence a word so if uh, if like for example there is a word and it follows the rules of a noun so we call it a word if there is a word and it follow the rule of article we call it a word like let me tell you for example we have a word in english uh, i say uh, unkind or suppose we have a word kind and when we add a prefix un so it becomes unkind so rules say that un should be placed 
before kind it becomes unkind so the rules doesn't allow me that i should say kind un right or we have another word for example common so the rules tell me that i should place un before the common i should say uncommon the rules do not allow me to say uh, to use un after the common common un i can't say or for example the rules tell me that if you want to change a verb from a noun you should you should add like suffix er teach plus er teacher now the rules does not allow me to say or teach or teach so if a word follow the rules of a noun we call it a word similarly that if a word follow the rules of a verb we call it a word similarly if a word follows the rule of preposition we call it a word but it's such important not only the rules follow here but also the rules inside a sentence that where we place it so syntactically we define a word that if a word follow the rules of certain word class we call it a word now but where we are or consider the fact that only words and group of words but not small unit can be moved to a different position in a sentence so we can move we can call it what is a word in a sentence a word in a sentence is the one that we can move we can take it at the beginning of a sentence we can place in the middle of a sentence or sometime we can take it somewhere else so such smallest unit can be moved to different position in a sentence for example in yes no question not all okay not all words smallest unit can be moved everywhere but some like for example uh, in yes no question the auxiliary verb does not occur in its usual position but it moves to the beginning of the sentence you can read my textbook versus can you read my textbook thus syntactic criteria can help to determine the word hood of given entity so the, the the concept of a word hood be given in a sentence so let me repeat the last one or consider the fact that only words or group of verb words but no but now smaller unit can be moved to a different position in a sentence right by smaller units we mean okay uh, for example we have a word books what well, okay, we have a word books so what is the smaller unit with the word books we have s so s cannot be moved to other place or we have a word uh, for example impossible so uh in the word impossible im cannot be move right so we can move okay uh like a not small unit but uh the, the the root word or we can call it a free morpheme that can be moved for example in yes no question the auxiliary verb not occur in its usual position but it is moved to the beginning of a sentence you can read my textbook versus can you read my textbook so to make a question we take can in the beginning the syntactic criteria can help to determine the word hood of a given entity now to summarize our discussion of the possible definition of word we can say that in spite of the intuitive appeal of the notion of word it is sometimes not easy to decide whether a given string of sounds or letters should be regarded as a word or not because it's problematic it's difficult to call it a word sometimes we call it a word sometimes we cannot so in the treatment above we have concentrated on the discussion of such problematic cases in most cases however the stress criterion the integrity criterion and the syntactic criteria lead to sufficiently clear result the properties of words are summarized as so we have seen 
that the stress criterion, the integrity criterion and the syntactic criteria lead to sufficiently clear result uh, uh, related to uh, the definition of words. So the properties of words are summarized as so now we have properties of words these are properties of words and if these properties are fulfilled by a term we may call it a word still right we are not sure that should we call it a word or not but we may call it a word so words are entities having a part of speech specification if a part of speech is specified whether a word belong to which part of speech or which word class whether a word is a noun it's a pronoun it's a verb it's an adjective or which word class this word belong to then we call it a word so if a part of speech is specified that is the first criteria or to understand or to recognize a word or this is the first property of a word that we should look at whether the part of speech is specified or not the second words are syntactic atoms okay they uh, the the words which occur inside a sentence and they are placed in a proper order to give us a unified meaning so then we can call such item as words first that if a word belong to uh, a specific part of speech the second that these words are syntactic atoms by syntactic atoms me we mean that they occur inside and a sentence in a proper order in a proper place we cannot move them everywhere in a sentence otherwise then the unified meaning would not be given so we have certain rules for that even if we move a, a, like a, a word class from one place to another so we have rule for that for example if i say that you can speak english and can you speak english so we have a rule that we can play we can take or we can move can to the beginning if rules do not exist we cannot do it and then we have words usually have one man stress there must be one man stress right there might be like other stresses what we call secondary or tertiary stress but they are not important so one stress that is fundamental or that is necessary if there is no stress so we cannot consider a term like a word and the last one that words usually are indivisible unit no intervening material possible this is the last one that words are indivisible unit fine so uh, we should find these properties in a word the first one that it should belong to specific parts of speech word class second that there should be syntactic atom inside a sentence in a proper order third usually have one man stress or uh, no matter that how many stresses are there but there must be one man stress and words are indivisibly our indivisible unit no intervening material possible we cannot put any other material inside word thank you so much for watching and for your patience please i need your feedback you can give your feedback in uh, comment box i will reply to you people and uh, if any other uh, lecture any any other topic is required so you can please uh, write me there in comment box and inshallah i will deliver my lecture so once again thank you so much